Ik vraag u uh, voor een groot applaus voor Victor Streng. Sit down. Sit here. Okay. I sit. Okay. That's what it's done, Sandy. Well, well, thank you. Oh, I need this. Yeah. Do I need this? Yes. yes. Yeah. Very happy to have you here, Mrs. Spinelli. Thank you very much. Thank you. to be here. Let's start at the beginning. 1933. Mm -hmm. You were born in a chip shop. Above. Yeah. <laughs> and you wanted to be an actor. No, I wanted to be a teacher. No, what, what, no, really, when I was in this mining village in Wales, my father had a chip shop. And I must tell you, the BBC in London, the head of the BBC, a man called Hugh Weldon, now Sir Hugh Weldon, all then he's dead, not good, bye bye. Um, and he said, uh, when I was on the program, and he said about the father of fish and chips, and he said, Are you going to mention that? I said, Yes, and if you do, Smith here. Then you know that the whole country will know that your father sold fish and chips. And that's what I'm giving him the plug. I said, the shop is still there. Anyway, go on. In 1963, yes. you were the star of an anti-war musical. Yes. And the Beatles came to see you. Yes. And you met in the dressing room afterwards. And they asked if you wanted to be a star in their film. Well. It was George Harrison, really. George said, you've got to be in our film, Vic. And uh, he said, if you're not, you've got to be in all our films. So I said, if you're not in them, me mom would come and see him because she fancies you. <laughs> so that's reason. Because he his mother once fancied me, so I was in the films. That's one of the reasons. Did you, did you ever meet George? His mother? Of course. Yeah. Oh, his family and Paul's family and, uh, well, not John's family, because I never met Auntie Mimi. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course, Louise. Yeah. <laughs> he, I even got her autograph. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you know, so I've got my back in there, feel so good. And that's it for what, so. what, what was your first <laughs> impression of them, of, of George? Well, I was a fan. Let, let me just say this now. I was a fan. I still am a fan. Um, I was telling you earlier, what is a family? A family is a, a collection of, remember when? Remember when we went to the seaside, it was cold, or remember when we went to the seaside and, and uh, something happened? That's a family, remember when? Now, we're a family because remember when you first realized you loved the Beatles? Remember when the first time you heard a certain recording? That's a family. So we are a family of lovers. And that's the important thing about the Beatles. That's why we are still here. That's why we're here now. I was just saying that to you earlier. We're here because anybody who buys a record that says, kill the nigger, kill the Jew, kill the faggot, get out of this building now, fuck off, don't want you. Because the Beatles were all you need is love. I said to John once, what's your best lyric, John? He said, that's easy, Vic, all you need is love. Their lyrics, they created a, a, a reservoir of poetry and melody that we're still drawing on, even today. We're still at that reservoir. The other groups are okay, but they don't really count, because they didn't have John, they didn't have Paul, and occasionally George, of course. It's a people about love. Their lyrics, there's no hate in their lyrics. Nobody says, well, there are one or two you know, nasty bits when John said about, you know, you can write such things about Paul's stuff, you know. But mainly it's about love. So please, we have a responsibility as Beatle fans, as Beatle lovers, to give out love, give out light. Some people are so mean, they can't even give light from their faces. We, as Beatle fans, have a responsibility. As I said before, don't buy that other shit. Sorry. <laughs> um, you were a professional actor. Yes. 64. They were just four very good musicians. What did you think of them as actors in Well, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I was there. 
uh, because in our days like they didn't keep to the script. Right? I think what happened to those t those outtakes it would have been amazing now. I mean, I walked on the set of uh, uh, Hard Day's Night in this big sweater, and I said, I'm a director, and John said, you're not, you're Victor Spinelli playing the part of a director. <laughs> and I said, I keep going, I said, I, I have, a, have an award on the wall in my office. And he said, office, you haven't even got a dressing room. Now, I had to keep going, because Dick had four cameras going at once to catch them without, so they wouldn't be, um, what's the word, they wouldn't be subconscious. So with the four cameras going, he was able to capture all sorts of things. That scene they did there now, where Ring was in that machine, like this, and it's all tied up. And uh, I got more close-ups in that scene because they were all stoned then, so they were falling out laughing at me. And uh, <laughs> when Ring was caught up in the machine like this, that's when, first time, when we did help, oh, families joined. Producers brought families, directors brought wives, cameramen brought kids, because it was the Beatles. When we did Hard Days Night, they didn't care. Now they were all coming. And suddenly, people are showing people around the studios, coming in, and they're working, and then they say, the people are coming, there's the Beatles, there's the Beatles. So when he was caught up in that machine like this, suddenly around the corner came the producer with about five or six people. And uh, they stood staring, and Ringo looked at them. And of course, his trousers are coming down, right? And he said, hey, Mrs., give us a wank, and they fled. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we kept in the bay. Sorry. As, as, as a professional actor, was there anything <coughs> that you could teach them, uh, acting-wise? Oh, no. no. Um, teach them, no. No, 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 no. Did they need a lot of direction in the, in the, in the film? What well, John said about acting, here we are. I just remembered this now. He said, uh, hey Vic, whenever the director shouts action, all the other actors suddenly change, and you remain the same. Does that mean you're as terrible as we are? <laughs> I said, yes. And I'm glad to be it. <laughs> <laughs>